Hi and welcome back. In our last video we finished up adding some sample content to our HTML structure and in this video we're going to begin to learn about CSS so that we can style and format our page. And I'm still in my uh, Manchester project folder but if I click this drop down arrow I will see my first website and that was what we began with. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and you should be back inside of this site. And at the very beginning, we actually created a file inside of our CSS folder called styles.css. If you don't have that file, just simply right click right there, select new file, and name it styles.css. And when I open it up, it's going to be blank except for this little header portion right up here but you should still have all of your HTML files that you worked with um, in the previous example. Now again, this CSS file is going to format everything in our HTML pages. So we need to establish a connection between the HTML page and the styles.css style sheet. And you do that by simply opening up your HTML file and coming into your head section right here. And this can go anywhere at all in your head section. Um, later on when we work on some more advanced topics in CSS, you'll find that um, the position of your style sheet link becomes important. But for um, this exercise, it can go anywhere at all inside of your head section. And to establish a link between this HTML file and the styles.css file, you're going to use the link tag. And you're going to include four attributes with that link tag. And the first attribute is the href attribute. And the href attribute needs to have the path to your CSS file. And again, Dreamweaver gives us this handy little tooltip here that I can either click on or hit enter and it brings up this select file dialog box and I can go into my CSS folder and there's styles.css I'll click OK and you'll see it puts the complete path to that file in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the space bar. Now the link tag can be used to link different kinds of files. So we need to tell it or we need to tell this HTML file what the relationship is between this page and styles.css. And for that we're going to use the rel attribute. And the value that we should include in rel is style sheet. And again remember to put those in quotation marks. So we've said that we should link styles.css to this HTML page and it should be linked as a style sheet. Now there are different kinds of style sheets that you can use with different kinds of pages. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to establish the type of style sheet that we're working with. And in this case, it's a text CSS style sheet. So that should be the value that goes into your type attribute. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and add the media attribute. And the media attribute tells um, the page what kind of media should use this style sheet. You can have different style sheets that affect your page differently depending upon how um, somebody is looking at your page. For example, if I, I want this style sheet to affect my page when I'm looking at it on a screen. But if I print a web page out, I may want a different set of styles to, to be used. And you can see here we've got lots of different options in here. And two of the most common options are screen and print. 
and again we're going to use screen and again as we get into more complicated examples of using style sheets you'll learn what some of those other options are and then I'm going to go ahead and close my bracket and link is a tag a lot like image or break in that when you close the link tag you don't need another closing link and you can see when I tried to type that there it actually put something else in there but you don't need that closing link tag you just simply put your closing bracket in and that will be enough so that's the link that we're going to use between or to attach this style sheet to this web page now because this style sheet is basically empty it isn't going to have any effect at all on our page and you can see there's still no styling here well let's go ahead now and just really quickly let's take a look and we've got some tags here there's an h1 tag here in the banner area and there's also an h1 tag inside of the content area so let's say we wanted to style our h1 tags I'm going to go into my style sheet and I simply type the name of the tag which is going to be h1 and then I usually press tab type an opening curly brace and then I always close my brace right away and this is going to be the standard format that all of your styles are going to take if we wanted to format an h3 tag we could set it up in exactly the same way and again these are empty if I save it you can see there's still going to be no difference in our page so let's say I want to change the font color of my h1 tag I'm going to go ahead and type color colon and then the code that represents the color that I want to um, use and in this case I want to use red so I'm going to type in a number sign and then F00 you can also just select a color here Dreamweaver again brings up this very handy tooltip for you so I've said that all of my H1s should have this particular color. I'm going to save that and we'll go into our HTML page and preview it in the browser and now you can see that my H1s have been affected. My H2s and H3s have not been affected or anything else. But my H1s have been affected. Which brings us to the standard format that you're always going to write your CSS formatting in and that standard format is going to be selector curly brace property colon value and then a semicolon and then a closing curly brace you can also have multiple properties and values in a single selector I could do selector here curly brace property value close with a semicolon and hit enter and then enter in another property and value and I can continue to enter in oops, formatting attributes or formatting values and when I'm finished I simply close my curly brace now just as with HTML the white space and the indentation doesn't matter to CSS there's lots of different ways that you could write this selector for example I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and paste it down here you could 
write your CSS so that it appears like this. Or I could do something like this. And that's a very common way that you'll see a CSS styles written. The only difference between the, these three different styles here is readability. Whatever way works the best for you, whatever makes it most readable for you, that's what you want to do. The important part is remember that you're going to be using curly braces here, not parentheses and not square brackets, but the curly brace. And then you'll have a property name and a colon separates your property name from the value. And you can see that up here in our H1. The property name is color and the value is F00, which is the hexadecimal color code that represents red. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But if I was to change this slightly and write that like that, you can see, again, there is no difference in that. This is all about readability. And you can mix them up too. For example, if I just have one property value or two property values, I may put them all on the same line. But if I'm creating a, a style that has, you know, 5, 10, 15 different property values in it, well, then I might write something like this. Or even something like this that mixes the two. And here I've got six property value statements, two on each line. And sometimes grouping your properties will make your CSS more readable. And again, this is going to make more sense as we um, proceed and learn more about um, these items. I'm going to delete that and save that file. Now, coming back here, H1 here is called a selector. And there are three basic kinds of selectors that you can work with inside of CSS. You can work with tag selectors, which is what this is. You can also work with something called a class selector. And the difference between a tag selector and a class selector is this tag selector is going to affect all of the H1s on this page. And it will only affect H1s. But let's say that some of our headings we want to be red and other headings we want to be blue. And it doesn't matter whether they're H1s or H2s or H3s. Um, we want to be able to specify that color. I'm going to go ahead and create a class style called red. And you can see here, I begin my class with a period. And then again, I hit tab and type a curly brace. And then I type in the property, which is color, and the value, which is going to be F00. And then I'm going to create a second class style. I'm going to call it blue. And I'm going to go ahead and type the color attribute in for that, which happens to be 00F. And we'll create one more. I'm going to call it yellow. And we'll do color. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and select this color option right here. And you can see I've got all these different colors that I can choose from here. If you want to go into the color mixer to specify a specific color, I've got this little color wheel right here, which will bring up my color mixer. And I'm going to go ahead and select. I can click on any color over here I want and adjust the brightness and the contrast of it. I'm going to go ahead and select that color of yellow and you'll see that it puts the code in there for me. 
I've got to remember to close my property value statement with a semicolon and then since I'm finished I'm going to close that with a curly brace. Now again coming back to my HTML page here if I preview it in a browser none of those styles have been applied. But I'm going to come in here to my H1 tag and I'm going to click in between the one and the bracket in H1. And I'm going to type a space and I'm going to use the class attribute and you can see Dreamweaver again very helpfully brings up a list of the possible classes that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and select blue there. And I'm going to go ahead and save this, preview it in my browser and we can see this first H1 here now is in that blue color but the other H1 has been left alone because we didn't apply any styling to that H1. But if I come down here I can go ahead and use the class attribute and select yellow, save it, preview it in a browser and now that's yellow and this is blue. So class styles are a lot more flexible than IDs or than uh, tag styles but you have to apply you have to type in that class into every element that you want to use that. So if I've got let's say I've got a page that has 20 h3s on it 20 h3 tags it would be easier to create a tag style for that than it would be to create a class style and apply it to each one of those individual items so you get more flexibility with class styles but they can be a little bit more work you have less flexibility with tag styles but they um they save you a little bit of time sometimes. Now the third kind of selector that I can create is an ID selector. And I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the two class selectors that I placed in there. Save that. And an ID selector is going to match an ID on your page. So I have a section called banner here and let's say just for some reason I wanted to move that banner over on my page a little bit. I don't want to center it. I just want to move it on over. I can do that by applying some margin to that. And to create an ID selector you start off with a number sign. And I can do banner and I'm going to say margin left is going to be 50 pixels. And I'm going to go ahead and close that off, save it, and we'll look at this in a browser again. And you'll see that has now been bumped over that amount. And I could come in and if I was to change this from banner to content, which matches this div down here with all of these elements inside of it. If I save it at this point and go into my browser, you'll see that entire div has been bumped over by that amount. So we have class styles, we have ID styles, and then the very first one that we looked at earlier, this time I'll do an H2 style, was a tag selector. And I'll put the color code for green in there for my H2s. And we'll go ahead and look at that and you can see my H2 now has that green color applied to it. Now again class styles are always written beginning with a period. 
ID styles are always written starting with the number sign, the tic-tac-toe sign, and tag styles don't have any prefix at all on them. But here's a point where there's some confusion. You're going to notice that when I use that ID style in my HTML, there is no number sign right there. And as a matter of fact, if I save that, and again, remember we did some left margin on content. If I was to save this and preview it in a browser, well, that's been moved over to the left again. There is no margin space on that div. When you're writing your styles, that's when you use the period or the number sign. When you're actually applying your styles, creating an ID or using a class style, you don't include that prefix. You can see here I put class and I put period red. And if I save that, no change. If I take the period out, save it. Now I have that colored. So that's an important consideration when you're writing your CSS. Remember, you use the prefix in the style sheet, but not inside of your HTML. And again, we have three different kinds of selectors here. Class selectors, ID selectors, and tag selectors. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the different kinds of properties and values that you can work with inside of CSS. So I'll see you in the next video.